Hey guys, it's Graham, what's cracking? Uh, let's talk about the Mercury series by Rob Cruzy. To date, there are five novels and two novellas or shorter stories in it. I have read three of the novels. I haven't read the two novellas, which they work like, like prequels. But having read three of them, I feel like I'm in a good spot to kind of uh, assess and recommend the whole series. I've read the first book twice. It's called Mercury Falls. Second book is Mercury Rises. And then today I just finished Mercury Rests. And uh, the next month I'm going to read the fourth book, which is Mercury Revolts. The cover art for it is really cool. Let me set it right here for the fourth one. It's, uh, you know, they painted them in with Washington crossing the Delaware. So there's a little bit of not necessarily time travel, but flashbacks. The, f the third book that I just finished today does have time travel in it, but you get flashbacks to Mercury's life throughout history as he's been involved in you know, various significant events, whether they were just you know, general world history or biblical history or what have you. Uh, the first book, it focuses on this guy, you know, Mercury Galileo is his name, he's an angel, and he's trying to prevent the end of the world. Uh, the way that I've normally described this series to people is it's like Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett, which, uh, if I understand right, season two of the Amazon show is airing soon. I never finished season one. I really liked the book, which is saying something because I don't care at all for Neil Gaiman's writing. Uh, I guess Terry Pratchett's writing would have a lot to do with that, although I've also never read anything else independently by Terry Pratchett. But I've read Good Omens three or four times, and uh, it's a lot of fun. But this Mercury series, it's like what Good Omens would have been if it were written by somebody who actually understood Christianity and wasn't making fun of it, was joking along with it, we'll say. Um, you know, I don't know anything about Terry Pratchett's beliefs or what they were. Uh, I, I gather that Neil Gaiman is just a general, maybe agnostic or secular or whatever. I don't know. Like I said, I, I'm not the biggest fan of his writing. I get that there are people that are all goo goo gaga over him, but I've read seven of his books and I've enjoyed two of them. Uh, I got to the point maybe 10 years back before I finally realized, like, it's not me, it's him. Like, I, I just don't think that his books are that good. But I digress. We're talking about Mercury, we're talking about Rob Cruzy. So, uh, Mercury Galileo, he's kind of a, not really like troublemaker, bad boy angel, but he just, he kind of moves at his own speed. He dances to his own tune, uh, but he's generally, you know, on the side of the angels, on the side of heaven, and he tries to prevent big bad things from happening. But being an immortal angel, he likes to enjoy life's pleasures, you know, music, ping pong, etc., etc. And when it turns out that uh, a series of children's novels are actually being written by the Antichrist to usher in the Antichrist, uh, you know, he he's realizes that uh, he's got to step in and prevent the Antichrist from rising up and taking over the world. A um, little bit of tongue-in-cheek commentary about uh, popular children's novels like, you know, Harry Potter or Percy Jackson, as if you know those were actually about demonic witchcraft and stuff, which I wasn't alive uh, or, you know, old enough to experience the satanic panic of the 80s with Dungeons and Dragons, but I did live through uh, the debut craze of Harry Potter, and there were a couple of pearl-clutching parental types that were worried that this stuff was teaching their kids to practice dark magic and whatever. It's like, just give it a rest, dude. Like, sometimes it's just a pop culture IP that kids love to read. Well, Rob decided to tackle that idea and work it into the story where there was actually this popular middle grade magic series about the Antichrist and, uh, whoops, it was being ghostwritten by one of the Antichrist minions. Like, that, that plays a role in the series as it goes on. Nope, oh, that's my car, thinking that my brake is engaged. It is not. Anyway, I, I don't want to break down each individual volume. I'm just going to say that I recommend the series now that I've read, you know, three of the five that are out there. Uh, you know, they, 
Mercury teams up with some humans in each different book. There's one woman named, you know, Christy. She's got a, a role to play through all three, but they pick up and discard other tag-alongs as the books progress and, you know, other biblical figures and, uh, you know, biblical lore figures pop up as well. You got Job and Cain in this third one, for example, but you've got other, you know, popular demon figures, we'll say, like Tiamat and Abaddon, like they, they play a role in the series. So I'm excited to, to read Mercury Revolts and then uh, I need to get a copy of Mercury Shrugs. That's the, the fifth one. Uh, but I'll, I'll wait until I've read the fourth one to get there. But I highly recommend you guys check it out. It's, it's funny, it's inventive, and it feels original. Uh, you know, in a genre that is usually you know, dominated by, we'll say, cynics and stuff. Like, it, it's fun to read something that ties in with biblical lore and popular Christian lore and is able to kind of poke fun at itself but still take its core tenets seriously. So I'd recommend it for that reason. Content warning for language. Uh, I feel like especially this third one was a little bit more intense, but that's because, um, you know, Lucifer himself was a focal character and he got into the White House and, you know, converted the president and a couple of uh, cabinet members to his cause. And, you know, he's Lucifer, he says bad words, so. That's my recommendation there. As a reminder, we are almost halfway through June and the campaign for Sheriff Porter is still on. Uh, we are over the $200 pledge mark, so thanks to everybody who's backed it. It's been a few days since we've gotten some backers and I'd like to add a few more. You can get the ebook for just five bucks. There's no you know, extra shipping fees or anything like that. The paperback, I've, uh, I've got an $8 shipping fee on that one. Uh, just based on experience, based on how the, the shipping went for the hero next door. But, uh, you know, if we get to the thousand dollar mark that I set for it, uh, I'll, I'll figure out some extra goodies to add in so that you're getting more than, you know, just the book and the shipping. Maybe some bookmarks, maybe some patches or something, we'll see. But I'll include the link in the description. And if you guys want to take a look at that and figure out a, a level at which you'd want to back it, I'd greatly appreciate it. The book is already written. The illustrations are already done. If it becomes successful enough, I might even add a few more illustrations. We'll see. But uh, give that a look. And until next time, drive safe. See you out there.